We're on a small hill on the Sacred Way in the Forum in Rome, and we're looking at the Arch of Titus. It's actually an arch to commemorate Titus. It was built by his brother in honor of the deification of Titus and in honor of his victory in the Jewish wars. Right, sack of Jerusalem? Yeah, which would have been 70-71 AD. And so this was probably about 10 years later or sometime thereafter. So we have a typical triumphal arch form. We have a single arch in the form of a barrel vault. The arch is framed by attached or engaged column. They're actually composites. Look at them. They're Corinthian. They have acanthus leaf, but they're also scrolled. And so it's sort of a, an amalgam of Ionic and Corinthian. It's an invention. I mean, we're on the side facing the Colosseum. It's likely that only those interior engaged columns or parts of those are original. Right. In fact, this was heavily restored. And you have to be very careful because most of what you're seeing when you look at this arch is not original. But it does give us some idea of what a triumphal arch looked like and felt like and its scale. On the inside... We have two important relief sculptures showing on one side the Roman army taking the spoils from the temple in Jerusalem. Specifically including the menorah, which is really prominently displayed um, both as booty and as a symbol of Rome's victory. Let's go look at that more closely. Okay. So they're carrying the menorah. On their shoulders in a parade, in a procession, and they're entering into actually an arch. Right. Very much in the long tradition of triumphal processions where the booty, the spoils, and the slaves that are being brought from a conquered nation are brought to the city of Rome for public display, for public humiliation, and as a way of expressing Rome's power. In terms of, of its style, is a remarkable sense of naturalism to the figures, the way that the drapery clings to their bodies and shows the form of their bodies, and there's an interest in movement and also space, because the figures that are further away from us are represented in low relief, while the figures that are closer to us are represented in high relief. Their bodies really push out of the wall. They're getting close to being freestanding figures. Right, and then as the figures move through that arch on the far right, going back into space. And so there's a remarkable realism here in the treatment of the body and in the treatment of space. And it's a good contrast for what's going to happen when we get later in the Arch of Constantine, where we saw the actual figures that date from the Arch of Constantine, not the stuff that Constantine put there from other monuments, right. but the things that date from the 4th century, where the figures are represented out of proportion with sort of large heads, and, and where That's the right. drapery is represented in a kind of linear way. Here the drapery looks really three-dimensional and, and forms itself around the body. It's interesting that, that the arch itself is facing the Colosseum, which was in large part funded by the money that came into Rome as a result of, of the sack of Jerusalem. That's right. And so on the, on the other side, we see the emperor in a chariot being pulled by a team of horses, again in that very naturalistic style. I mean, the figures stand in lovely contrapposto. Some of them are nude or partially nude, and horses look very natural and are moving. But there's a real sense of heroism through all of them. And you're right, there's a wonderful sense of rhythm. The rhythm is represented not only by the four horses pulling the chariot, which would actually often be represented in bronze on top of these triumphal arches, but also the rhythm is constructed by the spears that rise above the crowd. It's really creating a wonderful kind of visual rhythm that moves across that space. And that's echoed, actually, quite beautifully, I'm seeing now, by the legs of the horses below, so that you have this sort of middle band uh, that's quite dense with the bodies of the horses and the bodies of the men, and then above that, a series of visual rhythms. So we're seeing something that looks as though it's happening in front of us at this moment, right? The emperor is passing through, the emperor is is leading the procession. So there's, I think, a, a real sense of the momentary. It's true, but what's interesting is by the time this arch is being built by, uh, by Titus's brother, Titus had already been deified. And so he was already a god and had that special significance, that special power. And we do have a kind of mixture of the real and the unreal because we have an allegorical figure of victory, of winged victory, right behind the emperor in the chariot. And so we have this mixture of the real and the allegorical in the Arch of Titus.